Vicki, the common term for what we see here is shock collars. That, that gives a bad idea about what they're used for. What is the proper use of these training collars? Okay, the electric collar, remote trainer, shock collar, if you will, is best used as instantaneous correction when the dog commits an infraction out in the field. Before the electric collar was used as a training tool, the trainer had to run out to the dog after it committed an error, administer correction, then run back and resume the training process. The dog may or may not have known really what he was being corrected for by the time the trainer got there. With this kind of correction, you have a black and white communication with the dog. You have taken time to condition your dog. He understands why he is being corrected because you have already taught him how to do it properly. And that's the key, right, is that you don't use the collar for correction until the dog already knows what it's supposed to do. The worst case scenario I can possibly build is a man that's angry or a woman that's angry with their dog, buys a collar, takes him out to the field, and the first thing they do is at a high level press a button. That's asking for trouble. The dog doesn't know how to comply. So we try to always introduce it in the yard in a controlled situation. And we have to remember, number one, they're just training tools. They're not magic wands or things like that. So in the hands of an amateur with a little instruction from his local professional, from books, things like that, because they're adjustable, and can go so low, they're fine with anybody with a little common sense. When you get to the collar and the dog needs to know what it's done wrong, you have to be able to understand whether your dog knows what it's supposed to do or not. Exactly. And when in doubt, don't press a button. Like any athlete, even the best hunting dog can benefit from drills designed to maintain and improve upon their skills. This is Shady Lane Sadie the second, senior hunter, or just plain Sadie to us. She's five and a half years old and full of energy. In just a few weeks, she'll be starting her sixth waterfowl and upland bird season. It could be our best and most productive ever. If everything goes as planned, we'll hunt in more than a dozen states together. Sit. As far as hunting dogs go, Sadie can just about do it all. She can mark and retrieve multiple birds down. She's marked as many as five of them when we've been hunting. And if she doesn't see a bird down, she's trained to take hand signals all the way to the spot where I marked it down. This doesn't happen for any dog overnight. It takes hours and potentially thousands of dollars worth of training. And once your dog has it, it doesn't mean he or she can just sit in the kennel and be ready to perform on a moment's notice. There are three kinds of work that any dog is gonna need throughout its lifetime to maintain peak performance. They're drills, training, and testing. Each is different, but each is equally important. Now, it may seem like a step backwards for a dog that's fully trained to be doing drills, but nothing could be further from the truth. Drills reinforce the basics, and basics are the foundations on which all new skills are built. Come on, girl, good girl. A drill from which every dog can benefit from time to time is simply working on on-lead or off-lead commands like sit, stay, come, heel, and down. Since Sadie is trained to handle, a drill we do often involves laying out a pattern of dummies and her taking the proper hand signals to the dummy I decide she should pick up. For drills to be effective on a fully trained dog, you need to demand perfection here. The dog knows what it's supposed to do and should be expected to perform drills without fail. Anything less actually will set the dog back because it starts to understand that it can get away with improper actions. Training for the experienced dog is a bit harder to describe. Basically, it means setting up situations which expand on what the dog has learned in the drill. The purpose is for the dog to learn new skills. Because you're introducing new concepts to the dog, this is where you're teaching the dog what you expect of it. Every dog is likely to stumble or mess up somewhere along the way. You must make each mistake a learning opportunity while keeping the dog enthusiastic. Remember, in training, you're teaching, not disciplining. Finally comes testing. It's putting your dog in new situations. They're similar to, but not exactly the same as the concepts that you trained on. What you're trying to find out is if the training took, and if your dog can apply what it's learned in in-the-field situations. Drilling, training, and testing. They're all important to any well-mannered hunting dog. And you know the best part? You get to spend more time with your dog. Good 
girl, Sadie. Good girl. Yeah.